Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome in to another Pixel stream, Pixelogic. My name is Ian Robinson, aka IR Sculpts, and I make toys and statues, mainly for 3D printing. How are you guys doing? How's everybody? I have a little uh, little story to share with you guys with the current project of my Sea Dragon, which is the theme of uh, our stream this we, uh, this month on Pixo is um, Irish folklore mythology, and so I found this uh, Olafist, I believe is how you pronounce it, is basically a sea creature, sea dragon, and so we are continuing to sculpt for three D printing. And real quick, I just want to make sure that everybody knows to don't forget to subscribe on the YouTube channel and also follow because uh, there are tons of artists that stream here. And, and so we basically want to make sure that everybody gets uh, gets exposed to all the talent that is here within Pixo. So make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube or follow if you're on Twitch and also to uh, do me a favor, and if you're watching this after the stream, go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. Myself or somebody from Pixo will gladly answer your questions. So, if that, uh, so yeah, so if you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to comment down below in the comment section down below if uh, you have any questions after the stream. Whoop whoop! What's up, Snickles? What is up, Inspire 3D? Hello, guys. Hello. Sunday sculpting. So I have a fun little kind of story to to uh, go over with this uh, little thing that we've been working on. So uh, those of you who know me over on my own personal streams, I started to continue working on him. We left off on this dragon kind of, uh, kind of in the idea of test posing. And I woke up and realized I didn't really care for this pose much. So what is up, Jack? How you doing? So I wanted to kind of start the stream off with a jumping off point of basically saying it's okay if you don't like something you're doing, don't be afraid to scrap it and start over. So that being said, I went ahead and actually found a new pose that I really, really like, which is working off of him right here. And we're going to continue off at this point, been playing around doing some stuff. So yeah, we're, get, we're getting ready to uh, to push this a little bit further today. And so if you guys have any questions about this, this will be 3D printed and stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let me get my... And also too, guys, if you have any ZBrush related questions, please feel free to comment and I will answer them as best I can. My gloves a little snug. <laughs> and happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. And uh, I'm going to be streaming until about 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Or it's daylight savings time now, so <laughs> so about a three hour stream. But uh, the plans I have for this guy is, and I'll show you guys my pure ref real quick. I'm gonna create a boat for him. I have all these different uh, dragon themes and alligator scales and just thoughts. I use pure rev a lot to set up a mood board, and this gives me an idea of something to look at for reference. And so what we're gonna do is be making some waves with some of the new features today. And we're also going to be creating a boat uh, using Z Modeler mainly. What's up, Henry? How you doing? So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Let me know if that made sense too with the posing. Ideally, it's okay to fail. And so we wanna make sure that if we ultimately don't like what we've originally created, you know, something like this was our basic layout and then we moved into this pose and then you're just like, it's not working. Don't be afraid to abandon ship. It is okay. So let's get started. I'm actually gonna go ahead and duplicate this, this base layer just so I have an extra and we're gonna rename this uh, water. And I wanna get some wrinkles in there. And what I'm gonna be using is the new snake curve brushes. And if you haven't seen those, it's with a new update, the 2021.6.2 update. So we hit B for brush, S for snake. Then we can see right here, we have snake curve one, two, four, five. And these are amazing brushes. So I'm actually going to be using uh, snake, snake two. And it is definitely beneficial to be using it with Sculptress Pro. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna start off with a Dynamesh for this guy. Actually, let's go ahead and Get something a little bit more like this. There we go. All right. How's everybody's Sunday going? How's everybody's weekend? Did you guys have fun? 
Working on any projects? All right, we're going to go ahead and start making some ripples. And it's really cool because it's just like a curve brush. You go ahead and you make your curve and then you could just start pulling on it and you can actually get some nice little some little waves happen in here. We're just going to be following the shape of him. This is a really fun way to create little like ripples and tides and stuff. Good watch Justin Lee, Justice League really enjoyed it. Nice. Yeah, I heard that came out. I have not seen it yet. I might take a peek in there. Cool, all right. So again, just taking the snake curve two. And if you don't like the curve that you draw, you can actually just go ahead and just tap anywhere and I'll get rid of that curve. And we'll just go ahead and start putting that there. Very cool. So something like this will be, kind of give us the feel of what is happening with the water. I'm going to take the move brush, that's B, M, and V for move. I'm actually going to just kind of start lifting this up a little bit. It's a good use of that brush, yeah. Yeah, I did a little bit of uh, testing before I jumped on here. <laughs> it is definitely fun. There we go. And then, of course, too, you can just go ahead and kind of smooth that down a little bit. If it gets a little too much. Don't forget, too, when you're using the Snake Curve brushes and it encourages you to be using Sculptress Pro, make sure to go ahead and turn that off whenever you want to smooth or you'll be smoothing in Sculptress Pro, which we don't really want to do that here. I'll just take the damn standard and drop Lazy Mouse for a second. I have a lot of shortcuts, but Lazy Mouse can be found up in Stroke and then Lazy Mouse. And then let's turn Sculptress back on. There we go. Just get a little bit there. So now we can kind of have the wave happen right here. And we'll be using that a few more times to get what we want. I, I know tools in ZBrush, but how should I start sculpting? I find it hard. Uh, do you mean how do you start sculpting with an idea or just how to start sculpting in general? Can you clarify your question? If it's more of an idea, um, that's where reference really comes into play. Okay, so now we have something like this going on right now, and this is going to be a good start. I'm going to just go ahead and save it. I like to save often. It's very, very helpful. So if you are, if you're finding it hard to sculpt as in like getting started with a project, my biggest tip is actually try to pull concept as much as possible. It's really, really helpful to um, kind of see what other artists are doing and find something that's inspiring to you, something that is helpful for you. And then go ahead and try to sculpt the thing that you're seeing. Uh, a lot of sculpting jobs do require you to uh, basically sculpt from concept. So it's helpful, it's good practice, and also helps you kind of work on likeness at the same time, whether it be stylized or whether it be uh, more traditional. It doesn't really matter. Just try to land that concept as much as possible. And so uh, the other thing you could do is uh, gather um, reference images of something that you want to sculpt. Like here with this sea creature, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to create um, outside of the idea of the sea dragon. You know, I wasn't sure if I wanted him to have wings, if I wanted him to have arms. So I just found a lot of reference. And then I basically just started kit bashing those references as I sculpt. Uh, some things worked, some things didn't. And you just kind of try to see what inspires you and go from there. Hey, what's up, Ryan? In general, I want to become a character artist. So if you want to become a character artist, then find a lot of concept of characters that inspire you and then try to sculpt to that concept. It's a great starting spot, and it's really, really helpful to just get going. Um, ideas can always be kind of a hard thing to do or to get started with, so just 
um, just try to find something that inspires and encourages you. That is my best advice for you. You can also see what other artists are doing with some things that you like, and then not not uh, imitate, but maybe put your own take on it. See how other artists have handled, you know, like characters like Sailor Moon, for example. There was like a Sailor Moon thing happening last year at some point where people were like drawing your style. You can do a sculpt in your style, which is, that's usually pretty helpful too. Lots of little ideas like that. First time seeing you on Zebra Stream. How have you, how long have you been modeling? Uh, thank you. Um, I've been modeling in Zebra specifically for four years, but I have a background in uh, traditional hard surface with aerospace, very generic stuff. Um, so that was about eight, no, 10 years. But ZBrush, I've been in ZBrush for about four years. Okay, speaking of which, let's actually go ahead and start creating the boat. So I have a lot of reference for, for ships here. And the ship is not only going to tell a story in my sculpt, but it's also going to give us some sort of scale, which is very, very helpful to get and understand the size of our creature. So I'm going to go ahead and actually insert a cube. We'll do a cube 3D. And then we're going to go down to initialize. And we're going to set everything to one. And we're going to hit Q cube. And what this, is going to, what this will do is give us a very basic low poly cube to start with. We're going to go ahead and hit Control W, which will then give us all the same poly group. And then I'm actually going to go to Geometry, Topology, Mirror and Weld, which will give me a center line to work off of. Hey, Sloby Art, how you doing? Thank you. Yeah, I was saying in the beginning of this that uh, the original idea that we started with last week just wasn't working for me, so I decided to change it. Okay, and so now we're just gonna go ahead and try to get the basics of a ship. So let's actually come here. Let's scale this down a little bit. Now I'm not really worried about size at this moment in time. I'm just kind of worried about the look and feel of it. So I'm gonna pull the Z modeler brush up. So it's B, Z, and then M for modeler. Hello, is it possible to sculpt without a graphic tablet? It is possible, but it is highly not recommended. <laughs> um, it is recommended to just go ahead and get a very affordable or inexpensive tablet. You could probably pick one up for a few bucks. I would definitely, uh, definitely recommend it. It's really difficult without. The program is set up for, um, the program is definitely set up for a tablet, so. Okay. Let's go ahead and actually get some masking. So I'm going to mask, hold Alt to select this end. I'm going to pull this out and kind of start tapering this up a little bit. Hey, Kamara. Hello, hello. Hello, Citizen Mike. How you doing? I made it this time. Yay, Rush. How are you doing? Welcome in. Welcome in, guys. All right. So we're going to be going ahead and just getting some ideas here. Hey, Sanchez. Hello. Hello, guys. All right. I'm going to go ahead and select this backside here. And we're going to go ahead and scale this in a little bit. So we're just trying to create a ship, that, ship at this point. Something a little, there we go. Something like such. Doing fine, by the way. You, I'm doing good. Doing really well. Pin pressure is everything. You don't need a 25,000 Wacom tablet. Exactly. Even a cheap into a uh, tablet would be worlds better. Absolutely. I actually recommend a, if you're looking for super affordability, I recommend, um, I recommend looking at companies like uh, XP Pen, which is what I currently use for those of you who will I uh, would like to know and it's it's a great it's a great uh simple tablet to start with so okay so let's go ahead and i'm gonna do inset i'm actually gonna go ahead and hold alt and select the top part and then with inset selected i'm gonna go ahead and hit all poly groups and kind of drag this in a little bit which will give me the wall thickness that i'm looking for and we're gonna go ahead and just select this right here 
hover over the edge, hit extrude, and we're going to extrude down, changing a polygroup color by hitting Alt, so we get something a little bit different. And if I tap that a few times, it'll let me extrude down and get something like this. Hey, A-Cube. How you doing? Welcome in. Shout out to A-Cube, guys. Seriously, if you're looking for a super talented artist, uh, go check her out. She's amazing. Super talented. She's also a Pixel streamer, for those of you who don't know, but I'm sure most of you do. Go check her out. How to create masks with soft edges. Hey, Team Weird. Okay, to create a mask with a soft edge, let me actually show you a couple ways. Uh, let me save this real quick. And we're going to pull up a cylinder real fast, just so we can give a, a quick idea. So to create a mask with a soft edge, there's two approaches. The first one is the most common, which is just kind of selecting what you would like, and then holding control and tapping on the object that you've masked, and that will create a really soft mask. And you can go as soft as you would like. You can also, by holding uh, control, tap on the opposite side, and also mask the other side. So you can soften in both directions, resulting in a super soft mask. Uh, the other way you could do it is literally zooming as far out as you can. And then you can just go ahead and mask that area. When you zoom back in, you can see it's really soft. In comparison to masking up close, where it looks really sharp, by being far away from the object, you can also soften it that way too. So if you're in your very far in world space, while that may not seem like a common thing for me, I'm always out this far looking at my stuff. So if I wanted to mask something real quickly, softly, I would go ahead and do it that way. And then of course the control tap. You also have a lot of masking options here on the uh, right hand side of ZBrush. You have a lot of masking options in which you can go ahead and blur your mask, which will also soften. And then you can also sharpen your mask, which would tighten that up. So those are the shortcuts and also the menu options there. And for those of you who are coming in, welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. This is currently what we're working on. I'm actually going to put him above my head just so you guys can kind of see it. Stamp that right there while I work on this guy because we're making a boat. Let's see here. Uh, hello, Ian. How to sculpt realistic hair for likeness sculpting 3D print? Ooh, that is a super great question. Um, for 3D prints and likeness, likeness might be a little bit more difficult. Um, I have small experience with printing likenesses, um, and sculpting for likenesses with hair, but one of the sculpts I did recently, I just used a hairbrush or the new extrude feature and then used the rake tool to kind of cover it. Um, for 3D printing, I will tell you right now, don't don't use fiber mesh. You can probably set yourself up a little bit, but that can be complicated. That's, it's, I would say use the extrude brush, which is a new feature. So if you hit E, uh, when well you pull up your brush, you have extrude profile. You can create blocks and chunks of hair. And then from there, start detailing it very finely with using clay buildup damn standard and the rake brush to get that kind of effect that it's that it's real but um it's just kind of something you're gonna have to play with a little bit i could pull up an example here in a second how did you change the gizmo in the corner whoop whoop ah the gizmo <laughs> super fun i love it um if you go up to preferences i'm gonna use the handy dandy magnifying brush or magnifying glass right here is cam view and you can either make your own or you can use uh, some of the new features by hitting next and that will give you the ones that are installed with zbrush and i just made my own and then i saved it out into the cam uh into the cam view folder which is in the zbrush folder All right. No, no, your English is perfectly fine. Do not worry about that. Yeah, I would say just block it out in chunks and then from there, try to refine in detail and always look at um, 
the type of hair you're trying to uh, imitate and then just slowly layer it subdivide it layer it subdivide it work on it slowly and you'll you'll get it okay you are so welcome okay we're gonna go ahead and mass off this bottom part right here and i'm going to with the z modeler brush because we're still working with that i'm actually going to go ahead and create a couple edge loops just so that we have a little bit of geometry to work with because again we started from a cube but now i'm going to mass this bottom side off and then i'm going to actually just kind of scale it in a little bit so we get that kind of uh um i don't know the pro proper term but you know we get that nice taper on the on the ship itself and then I'm also going to add a couple more edge loops. Now, here's a really cool trick when you're working with Z Modeler and you don't want to crease any of your edges, but you definitely don't want to have um, soft round edges. What you can do is when you're adding in your edge loops, add edge loops as close as you want to the uh, plane changes within your mesh. And what this will do is actually allow supporting edges and allow a slight fall off, but then, so like here, for example, if we look at this crease right here, if I hit D for dynamic subdivision, you can see it kind of rounds a little bit, like it rounds a lot, where if I go ahead and add a couple supporting edge loops on either side, and I hit D, it now kind of makes a sharper transition, but it's not super sharp, it's just nice and soft. It's a great way to kind of control your edge loops without having too many there. Uh, thanks for the tips. No problem. Uh, why clip curve is so clumpy? Can't accurately predict its effect. Okay, so there's actually with clip curve, and I'll use it right here real quick. If you hold Control Shift and select clip curve, when you go to make a when you go to make a cut, where clip is, let's see if I can explain this right. Wherever clip is, this um, as you start dragging out. With, with clip on top, that's actually going to give you an accurate cut. If I were to start slicing... Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can explain this right way. So if I draw out this line, you see that on one side of the line says clip, and then it gives you the angle. And then on the other side, it doesn't say anything. So the side that says clip is the side that is going to cut. But if you drag the opposite way, it's going to try to cut in the way that it wants but it knows that you want to kick it over to the other direction so when you're dragging it out do a test drag and figure out where that where that says clip it's usually on the left and then you can go ahead and hit and cut your edge now if you want something that's a little bit um softer and not as sharp if you hold control sh uh if, sorry if you hold spacebar then control shift you actually bring up the intensity level and you can adjust the clip curve intensity and then it won't be as sharp. It'll be a lot softer and a little bit more consistent instead of trying to just sh like smash that material up against the uh, uh, the rest of your geometry. So hold space bar, control shift together, adjust the intensity and then make sure that you're cutting, that you're dragging and cutting on the direction that says clip, which for most people would be to the left or down. Hopefully that was helpful. Okay. Let's go ahead and move forward with our ship. I'm going to go ahead and mask off this area right here. I'm going to turn off symmetry for a second. I'm going to go ahead and drag this out just a bit. Something like that. I'm also going to select... here no that'll be fine okay so now i'm just kind of looking at my reference and figuring out how i want to place this now of course we're making a ship and not a boat um, but it's also going to be small so we don't want to focus on too many details that won't exist so what we're going to do is 
I'm going to go ahead and grab the BIT, so the IMM Primitives brush, and I'm going to go ahead and get an insert cylinder. I'm going to drag this out right there. I'm actually going to bring this up and kind of stretch it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of angle that at a 15 degree, because that's going to be kind of like where the sails will, will touch. I'll actually drag that out a little bit more. Not quite sure what these what the names are exactly, so don't mind me. But we'll drag out the pointy thing of the ship. Now what I'm gonna do is actually select the center part right there. So what I did was I grabbed the lasso and I just kind of angled it, selected this middle part. We'll invert that. Kind of bring this up a little bit and also out just a bit. Let's see. Hey, what's up, Alex? How are you doing? Hey, Ian, spicy time. What do you think of <laughs> No, not touching that one. <laughs> Heck no. If you guys want to know my thoughts on that, join me on my personal stream. <laughs> uh. All right, let's go ahead and grab that right there. Pointy thing has to be the correct term, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, what I'm gonna do too, so let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually group by normals. And I'm gonna select this inner part. I actually realize I don't want it as, as, uh, actually don't want that extruded. So if you go to geometry, I'm sorry, nope. If you go to polygroups and hit group by normals, you can actually Create some uh, polygroups based on the plane changes and delete hidden. Oh, I broke it. Actually, you're also catching me in mid thought. <laughs> I'm also thinking about those uh, EFTs. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and draw a uh, cube. <laughs> it's <laughs> right exactly all right just kind of looking at some of these ships and how they're designed and i definitely want to maybe fill this in a little bit more so i realize i don't want it as uh as steep as i had it before so i'm gonna go ahead and create like what would be the captain's ship or the captain's area so, and I will use clip curve for this to go ahead and kind of clip off some of the edges. Maybe expand it a little bit. And then cut that section off. So it kind of, kind of hidden a little bit. Maybe what we'll do is we'll create like uh, some docks and stuff like that. Again, we don't want to put too much detail in where we're not going to really see it. So we really just want to make sure that we Focus on the important stuff. So we'll do something like Sitch. <laughs> Was that a good answer, AQ? <laughs> okay. And so uh, another trick with a clip curve is if you go ahead and you're drawing out a, uh, a single line and you want a sharp edge, double tap Alt, and that'll actually give you a very sharp transition. If you press Alt-1, so it'll actually kind of arc it a little bit. Uh, which would work here in this case, but I'm going to go ahead and just double tap Alt. And as you can see, Clip Curve is symmetrical. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and bring that down just a little bit. And then I'm going to hold Control and actually... Mesh is partly hidden. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and hold control and drag out 
a... Actually, let's grab this. Anytime you use the IMM or you're copying, it actually doesn't set you up too well for having multiple polygroups. So going to polygroups and hitting auto groups really helps re-isolate a few things. And I'm going to go ahead and control drag. And as you can see here, even control drag doesn't quite help in that case, keeping separate polygroups. So a good trick is to just invert your mask, control W, and that will select that. And there we go. So again, it's all just the modeler and IMM brush just to give us the shapes that we want. And then another trick is with your Gizmos app, uh, hold control shift and tap, and that will go ahead and isolate and mask everything else and isolate just the one poly group that you want. And then we can go ahead and hit control tap again. And again, so I'm using this to kind of fill in what I didn't like, but also give it a little bit of layering, just like that. And then again, we're gonna go ahead and clip curve. Actually, make sure to turn on symmetry. There we go, Bloop. there it is. And actually what's really gonna be helpful is I'm gonna be creating, um, I'm gonna be creating which I'm gonna call it, uh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> I'm gonna be creating sales. There we go, I knew that one. Um, so these points are actually, I'm gonna utilize these points to create the posts for the, uh, for the sales. So it's all gonna be a win-win here. There we go. Now I wanna check my mesh too. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit D for dynamic subdivision and kind of see how this is all transferring. And as you can see, I have a couple issues here, nothing too crazy. So we can go ahead and fix that with the Z modeler brush. Clip curve, is it good for chips? Do you mean like potato chips? What kind of chips do you mean? Like making potato chips? That's what I think of automatically. I love potato chips. <laughs> Clip curve could be pretty good. I would probably do more of a mask and select um, if you're trying to get that type of chip. Um, unless you have another another one in mind. But you could definitely use it for pretty much anything you can think of. Anytime you're clipping some sort of geometry, yeah, you could definitely use it there. Maker, maker, no, you're totally fine. I just want to clarify, make sure I can answer your question to the best of my abilities, so... Do not worry. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of stretch that out a little bit. Make sure that it is right where I want it. Having dinner and watching the stream, boat is credit. That's right. <laughs> I mean, angle shard or, yeah, I mean, Again, just remember that the clip curve itself, so if I go ahead and make this a poly mesh, um, just remember that the clip curve itself is designed to push the geometry back. So in a sense, yeah, you could quickly and very effectively just kind of cut something really fast and get some sort of shard. Um, so like, for example, if I wanted to turn this into a crystal of sorts, yeah, I can go ahead and kind of warp this out. And then you can even use I'm pretty sure. I'm about ready to find out. <laughs> if you go to um, blip up, transform, activate symmetry, and then turn on radial symmetry. And let's make sure we got the right radial symmetry on. I believe it is the Y axis. So I don't know why I hit Z. There we go. Um, you could actually go ahead and clip just like this. And boom, you got yourself kind of a quick crystal y thing in less time it takes to talk about it. So, yes, you could very easily. And again, by holding the space bar, control shifts, change that intensity a little bit. Now you can make something, let's go a little bit more like that, and then something like that. So yeah, you can make some sort of crystal or shard pretty quickly. Just wanna kind of watch out for what kind of patterns you're getting. Oh dang, pirates have treasure. <laughs> yep, so. So yes. Absolutely. Pretty much if you can think it, ZBrush can do it.
Okay, so what we're gonna do is let's get into this boat real quick. By getting that Z modeler, I'm actually gonna go ahead and create some of those edge loops. So again, I like the thickness of this um, of this wall, so I wanna keep that, but I don't wanna crease it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hover over an edge and drag a couple supporting edges just so that I have that transition. And I'm gonna do that on both sides of the wall. So that way we have it there. And then when I hit dynamic subdivision, I don't lose my wall thickness and I do get kind of a nice sharp, nice sharp little edge. I'm gonna grab this. Now the clip curve, if you have it selected and you click on one of your poly groups, you can't invert it. So you do have to go back to select or uh, select lasso or select rec to change that. Just a little heads up there. And then you kind of push in some of the material that might be giving you a little bit of issues. You are so welcome, not a problem. Okay. And I'm going to turn off dynamic and I'm going to create a couple more supporting edges just so I have something to kind of work off of. And what I like about doing the supported edge, edge method, in my opinion, it's really helpful to um, get controlled fall offs so that you get really nice fun shapes and you can kind of make it however you want. It's a little bit more um, tedious as far as like your approach, but you can definitely get some fun shapes that way. I'm freshman to ZBrush. Uh, not a problem. Perfect questions, man. Please keep them coming. And if I can answer them, I definitely will. Okay. Now what we're going to do with this is grab this right here. Okay, so I'll hold Alt and tap this little uh, location icon, which will, when you have a mask, that will pop your gizmo over there. And what I'm going to be doing is kind of creating a little bit more of an angle here. So this will collide in with itself. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and just stretch this out a bit. Like such. Okay, that might be a little too long. So let's go like something like this. Now what's really cool is, let's say I don't want all these edge loops and I do want to make this pointy, but I don't really necessarily want to uh, fiddle with each one of these edge loops. If you go to geometry, modified topology, nope, I'm sorry. Uh, if you go to edge loop, there is a delete loops and that will delete all of those loops. So geometry, edge loop delete loops will delete all these nice middle ones and then I can just go ahead and select this section right here press Y on the keyboard when I bring the gizmo up gives you your transpose tool tap right in the center hit Y again so that puts that gizmo right in the center where I need it to be and then I can kind of scale this down and I can get that nice kind of pointed spiky thing on the end of the ship whatever that is called that's what we're calling it today, the, the spiky pointy thing. Okay. And now let's get the sails going. So BIT, this is my favorite. Uh, IMM Primitives, I think, is my new favorite brush. I use it all the time. And cylinder with no edge loops makes it even easier to kind of drag out a shape like this. Stretch it out. We're going to use this for the sails. Now, this is where we do want to be careful because I will be 3D printing this. Wall thickness will be crucial. So I'm going to make them a little bit thicker than I normally would just so that we make sure that it will print when the time comes. And let's make that sail kind of tall. Let's make it like that. Okay. From here, I'm actually going to go ahead to sub tool and hit split hidden. So split. And I'm sorry, split mast. So that way we can split off this portion. And let's turn off our dragon for now. 
get our ship going. And let's rename this. This will be the sail. And then let's come down here, rename this as the ship itself. What's up, brother? I hope to see you at the sculpt dock tomorrow. Puff cop. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. What is that, Spicer? Everybody, check out Spicer. Shout out to Spicer. Not only is he an amazing, an amazing dude, but also a very talented sculptor here on Pixo and in real life. So, <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's an awesome dude, awesome sculptor. Please check him out. Big shout out to him. He also uh, nudges me to sculpt off with him in his dojo, which is awesome. If you want good inspiration, you want somebody to nudge you, Spicer's your guy. Or me. Or Spicer. Or AQ. Come sculpt with us. And don't you worry, Spice. Er, don't you worry. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so now that we have this guy right here, I'm actually going to go ahead and hit Control shift d that duplicates any one sub tool or folder if the folder is compressed. So be careful on that. But what's perfect about that is now I can go ahead and utilize, hit mirror and weld. And I can actually utilize the same assets I have to create my sails. So, Sales are pretty long and awesome, so let's go ahead and let's add a couple of these. Holding control will come up. Control, bring that up, let go. Boop, there we go. That'll be perfect. And we're gonna go ahead and go to poly groups and auto groups. And we're gonna go ahead and just shrink a few of these. We'll kind of taper them a little bit, like such. I'm the nudge master. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> I have to ask, uh... I have seen The Last Dragon. I don't know if... So I'm sure Spicer has seen The Last Dragon. Alright. Last Dragon is awesome. Okay. So now we got this. What we're gonna do is we're going to insert a plain 3d so insert plain 3d and this is going to be our sale but this is way too much topology to deal with at the moment so what we're going to do is go to geometry and reconstruct sub uh, subdivision until i get just this basic shape right here i'm going to scale this down i only wanted a few edge loops Right. So now we got something like this. Now we're going to do We're going to go ahead and just select these three rings, invert that. I'm going to go ahead and bring these up so it's like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the middle one and bring this up here. And that was an even Z modeler, that was literally just the gizmo. And now we're going to go ahead and spread that out like such. Let's grab these ones right here. I'm going to go ahead and spread these out. So I'm just using the masking feature and the gizmo to kind of flare out some of these edge loops. Again, working on... Just using a few edge loops can really just help a lot. So you get something like that. And now, and the reason why I used the plain 3D is because the edges are already creased. And so I can hit dynamic subdivision and bring in a thickness and utilize that thickness to my advantage. <laughs> What do I think about the NFT token? Can an unknown person sell something? I'm going to, I'm going to basically just say that um, I really want to keep it on Pixo, 
since this is a pixel logic stream i definitely want to keep it on zbrush related questions but what i will say about the nft is just please do your research before investing time or money into it um i Definitely would love to try to chat about that more in my own personal Discord. Um, and if you guys want to know where you can find me, believe you me, you can find me here at any one of these links. Let me post it real quick. Copy, copy, copy. <laughs> face, face, face. But please do your research. <laughs> Ash is going to make me talk about it at the end. I can already tell you. <laughs> please just do your research more so than anything else that's all i ask and join me on my discord and yeah <laughs> yeah fun i know i know it's a super hot topic i'm not avoiding it per se as much as i would just rather people do their own research please 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 it's that important um i think overall it's a great idea um but there are some definite flaws with it that i would more than happily go into in my personal stream which you can catch me at one of those links if i got an invite would i do it do you want to know a secret is actually uh well, it's not really a secret if i announce it here i actually did get an invite i just don't know if it's legit <laughs> it's a UK company. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and copy this by holding Control Shift D, dragging this out. And now I am just literally duplicating and getting my sales. Like such. I mean, I guess I don't know if it's a legitimate website. I invite, I guess. Ash, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, I'll message you later, and then you could tell <laughs> you could tell me your thoughts <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and pop that down like that, and we're just gonna go ahead and drag this out. And see, so you could just go ahead and use the gizmo as your best friend. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very difficult, was it? <laughs> All right. So now we got this guy right here. So already we got our nice little, little saily, saily bow. <laughs> okay. And for this, let's make sure I'm going to go ahead and actually merge these two down. So let's go ahead and hit copy merge. And then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, auto groups this again. It's still just using dynamic subdivision and using dynamic thickness, which can be found under geometry and dynamic subdiv. You guys really want to use this as your best friend. Whoa. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. My music did something weird and I thought all of a sudden that uh, I lost everybody. Okay. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. Bloop. And then I'm going to take this guy I'm going to merge down here, so let's go ahead and merge down. Yeah. <laughs> Hi there on YouTube as well. Hello, Zebras Princess. Hello, welcome in, welcome in. Glad to see you here. Okay. I think what I'm going to do with this one, I'm actually going to bring this up like such... I'm going to make a, a much bigger one. So I'm actually going to grab this guy. Drag that. Whoops. Let's go ahead and drag just that part down. So I just masked that one little section and I brought that down. I'm going to go ahead and auto group this. So again, make sure you go to poly groups and auto groups. Yeah. I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna drag this down holding control. There we go. I'm actually gonna make this one longer, like such. Let's grab this guy. Let's bring this up. Hmm. 
<laughs> you got those good vibes. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure we're surviving. Oh yeah. All right. And let's go ahead and hit auto groups here. Now I'm going to select this one. I'm going to control drag this as well. As you guys have probably figured out, I'm a huge fan of control drag. I feel like it just saves everything. So much time. Let's bring that in a little bit like such. There we go. And welcome in everybody. If you are new, by the way, guys, my name is Ian, aka IR Sculpts, and I sculpt toys and statues for 3D printing mainly, and it's a lot of fun. And I am sculpting a, I believe it's pronounced Oli Fist. It's a sea dragon uh, that is based in Irish folklore. Really, really fun. There's actually not a whole lot on it. You probably will figure out more with like sea dragon. You get more research there, but. We're gonna be making this for 3D print, it's gonna be fun. Hey, how do you change the rotating head up to be the Vegeta head? Oh, hey, Joel. Okay, so this is called your cam view or your, your yeah, your little cam view. If you come up to preferences and come on down to cam view, you can see that the cam view is selected on and then you have a make cam view. So if you wanna actually make your own, I didn't cover it earlier, but let's say, let's actually clear this off. Let's say I want to make this ship my cam view. What I recommend doing first is taking your object and merge visible so that it actually merges as a its own separate its own separate subtool, which I have it. Where did it go? Right here. And then make sure you send this to world orientation. So just go ahead and uh, hit home on your object, set it to the middle, hit home. And then from here, now that it's home, kind of fill the screen by hitting F on the keyboard. So that way it fills the entire screen. Come up to preferences and then say make cam view. Go ahead and click that and it's going to generate your cam view. But we're not done yet. You actually have to do a few things before you can keep this, this beautiful little ship as a cam view. Uh, but what you'll notice is if you come over to the left hand side, Right on your brush side, there's a, a texture palette and it actually created a texture image. Go ahead and hit export. And you actually want to go into Pixelogic folder where you, where your programs are installed. So for PC, it's going to go ahead and it's going to be usually on your C drive, program files, scroll down to Pixelogic, ZBrush 2021. And then go down to Z startup, and then you have cam view. You go ahead and title it whatever you would like. Say boat is awesome. Go ahead and save that, and then just go ahead and hit enter. That will save it. From here, you just go up to preferences, config, and then go ahead and store your config, and then it will say that you're stored. If you would also like at the same time, save your UI wherever you would like to save that, and then go ahead and load that and store that. And now this will be your your boat. Now let's say you're not happy and you wanna change it back. Go back to preferences, go to cam view, and then just hit next. And that will take you to the last one that you had. And then you can actually go to preferences, select next a bunch of times, and you can see some of the, the default, whoops, click the wrong button, uh, the default ones that ZBrush gives you. And then you just cycle through them until you get the one that you like and then config and store config. So hopefully that was helpful for you, Joel. And if you, if that was a little too fast, you can always double back, come back here, uh, make sure you're subscribed uh, and you can actually check that video out here uh, anytime because it'll be on YouTube forever. Okay. Now let's go back to, where were we? There it is, right? Nope, that's not the one, that's not the one. That's not the one, this is the one. There it is, okay, great. Let's continue making our ship. Not a problem. Yeah, it's a fun little feature that, uh, honestly, I was super excited to learn about the very first time I did it, so. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make these a little bit more flared. Hopefully that's a good word, flared, bloop. All right. Now I wanna move these sails up a little bit, at least this middle one. So let's actually bring those up. Let's grab those right there. Let's move those up a bit. There we go. There we go. Kind of offsets that a little bit. You can also hit the the pizza box. And I don't want to mask these off here. Nah, it should be fine. I'm indecisive at this moment. Let's go ahead and just grab that up a little bit more. Like such. There we go. All right. And then. Okay. I think I want to make a couple rectangular sails. Or not rectangular, I'm sorry, I can't speak today. Triangular uh, sails. Maybe something that kind of comes off the... This side. <laughs> I was going to say bow, and then I was like, I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to ships, so don't, don't quote me. I just know I want the ship, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and grab a, another insert cube. And again, I'm actually going to drag this off right here. Something like such. There we go. Drag that down. And again, we're going to go ahead and just kind of angle this that away. And it's solo for a second. So then I can go ahead, clip curve. So let's come here, double tap, come up this way. And just... As they say, grab this guy right there, double tap. There we go. Let's just bring that back. We'll squeeze this in just a smidget. There we go. As a yacht designer, you're doing just fine. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> just keep saying various term ship terms with 100 percent confidence, right? Yeah, that's uh that is probably my best bet at this point. <laughs> Very cool. Actually gonna go ahead and clip that a little bit more. There we go. So there we go. This way it just kind of looks like the thing that we want it to look like. Uh, that might be a little bit too tall though. That's one giant captain's captain's area. Captain's log. Okay. Now kind of just looking at the overall design here too, seeing where some of the uh, imperfections are. We'll go ahead and kind of nudge these in. Again, this will be 3D printed, so I'm not really concerned about uh, necessarily uh, what geometry is colliding with each other. I just want to make sure that it is looking like the thing I want it to look like. Let's go ahead and get select wrecked. Let's grab... I'm trying to grab the purple thing right there. we go. Okay. I'm actually going to go ahead and mask this area off. Invert that. We're going to use the gizmo and actually kind of pull that in just a little bit. Because so what you could see is that that was a little too thin in that area. There we go. Time to play Sea of Thieves and you'll learn lots of ship stuff. Nice. <laughs> and printable, exactly. Okay. There we go. I'm really just trying to give it some sort of appeal. In actuality, I would say this ship is probably going to be no bigger than, I don't know, fingernail clippers maybe. Like, it's going to be small. Like, this thing is going to be maybe no more than an inch in, in uh, 
link. Like, so that's the thing. That's something we'll have to figure out. We'll just make sure that these walls aren't too thin, which I will go over uh, next week, actually, when we prep it for 3D printing. So, all right, what we can do now, we don't need this to be sent home. Like we actually do not need this whatsoever to be in home orientation. So we could just go ahead and move this all together. So let's take the sails. Let's actually apply the dynamic subdivision, which will turn it into real geometry. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and scale, uh, merge down the sails into themselves. Take the ship, apply the dynamic subdivision, and go ahead and merge that down so that it's all one thing. And let's rename this ship. And now we're going to turn everything else on, our water and our base. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this to where I need it to be. So make sure symmetry is turned off. And let's place it in our scene and see what we what we get, what we like. And make sure that we set that scale. And this is super important that we we set this right where we need it to. Now I'm thinking about creating a wave a little bit. So we might have this up kind of on a wave, kind of up here a little bit. I think that'd be really cool. We could play with some fun water stuff right there. It's got a little tweaked. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can continue adding detail when we need it. Right now, let's just make sure that it works. So we have our ship in place. And let's say, let's actually go down a little bit more. Make our creature really monstrosity. Monstrositous. Monstrous. Big. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to play around a little bit with some, like some gravity, anti-gravity feel. Um, so I'm gonna want this ship to be kind of like angled pretty far. Now, when we're thinking about anti-gravity in prints, a rule of thumb is to kind of go off of the the triangle uh, the triangle method for support. And what I mean by that, it's that's not the official name, but if you basically envision a triangle, right? So at each point of the triangle, it can balance itself because triangle is 45 degrees off each other usually. Um, so 45 to 60, if I want to get technical. So with this idea, if I put a wave that actually kind of helps support where this is sitting, then while the direction of the ship looks like it'll be pointing out this way, we can actually set support into the print with the wave going this way, but then have the wave kind of come at this angle which will give us the illusion that this thing is actually floating there. So we could play with design this way to get some of the results that we're looking for. And I'll explain that. So hopefully that makes sense. So it's a little bit better in practice. So let's grab our snake curve. And what I'm gonna do is actually kind of create the wave here. So I'll take a big brush, okay. It's a little bit too big, so let's go back this way. And let's actually scale that down just a little bit. Okay. We're actually gonna come up a little bit. I'm gonna go just a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and use that mask, soften that up. I'm actually gonna start playing with the gizmo and get some of this effect that I'm looking for. So if you guys are looking for some fun environment stuff, this is one way you could definitely play with it. And now what I'm thinking about is the wave is going to hold the weight of the ship, 
Okay, so the wave has to make sense not only for the scene, but then for actual gravity when we go to print it. So it's it's really imperative that we make it all make sense, right? By still keep but still keeping it dynamic and still giving it some sort of feel. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of design this up like such. There we go. And then going back to that uh, snake curve, I'm actually going to use snake curve four here. Let's go ahead and isolate this. It's not giving me the results that I'm looking for. Let's see here. Ooh, okay, let's actually go with snake curve. Let's go with number two. Two is probably going to be the most control here. Because I want to push it in a little bit. There we go, yeah. And then let's put the ship back on. I'm going to grab this right here. Bring this up like this is splashing up on them. Now I'm going to take the snake curve with noise. That's snake curve five. And that noise is actually going to give me a little bit of texture to work with. And then if you have a dynamesh like I do, you can actually tap anywhere, redynamesh it, and you can slowly build up some noise. There we go. And we'll go ahead and start sculpting in some of the actual wave movement with our clay buildup. So B, C, B, we'll do that pretty well. And of course, I'm going to look up some reference here in a second, which I just go to, you, uh, to Google usually, and I'll just pull in some wave reference just to have some idea if I don't have any on my... Uh, mood board. I'm just going to go ahead and build this up. I'm going to soften it a little bit. There we go. And then, of course, too, we can go ahead and kind of dial it in as best as we want. And if you're having a hard time getting underneath something because the rest of it gets in the way and you are using Sculptress Pro, just note that you can now select a certain section and then you can go underneath it and still use Sculptress Pro to rebuild that geometry. And you can fill in that area just like such. <laughs> Popping up to the dragon that popcorn. Oh man, I wanted popcorn earlier today. I was craving it. And I didn't even realize I had some. <laughs> so you can do that right there. And if you think you're going to be selecting a certain section more often like let's say i really want to make sure that i can come back to this wave without selecting it each time then just remember too that you can actually uh hold control w which will then go ahead and create a a mask uh, a polygroup off of that mask that's selected so then you can always like later if i just want to get back into that wave Shift, control, tap, and get right back in there. So that's another effective way to uh, get get to the area that you're trying to really quickly and come back to it. There we go. And I think uh, I'm going to actually want to start coloring this a little bit too. Color is really helpful to kind of help finalize. And I would like to start texturing the beast pretty quickly. I would like to get to that today. So I think we'll go ahead and do that shortly here. 
was able to find some really cool scale brushes and stuff for ZBrush uh, shopping around and browsing. Uh, sometimes I make my own. It depends on the on the reference. Okay. And I'm real quick, I'm just going to plop, pop into Google for a second and just type in uh, uh, ocean waves just so that I get a sense. I'm never afraid to go in and kind of just quickly research something, especially if I have no idea how that's going to look. Make sure to just kind of quickly get something, go into Google real quick, and then just type in that thing that you're trying to achieve. It'll really just kind of help you get a visual sense of what you're trying to replicate. Uh, you changed the dragon. It's different than the last one. I did change the dragon. I actually spoke about that earlier, and I will tell you guys. So I played with this design, and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I didn't mind where we were going with it. I thought it was pretty cool. This is where we started, and then I did this test pose. But at the end of the day, if you don't like something, change it. So I went ahead and uh, played with a few things, and I landed on this. And I was really, really happy with it. So I pulled a lot from the original design, but then I got rid of some stuff. And I thought this would tell a better story and make for a better print. So yeah, reference, reference, reference. Hey, what's up, Happy Extruder? And yeah, we'll, we'll get to some noise and stuff too. But you can see here, the clay buildup is really cool because you can get that kind of direction of the wave itself into the, uh, into the water pretty effectively. And again, everything is about just building up layers and seeing if it's something that you like and when in doubt and you're not quite sure, try something else. Don't be afraid to change direction. At the end of the day, worst thing is that you don't like it and then you can kind of you can kind of change that, so Oh yeah, that's perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna add just a little bit more pull on this wave. So I'm using the snake curve two this time. Kind of pull that up a little bit. There we go. And there'll be some kind of fall off waves too. So let's hit something like that. Grab that right there. Kind of crashing into itself a little bit. There we go. This is much better. I completely agree. <laughs> so, but now we're going to have this wave supporting this ship, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So when we start really texturing this ship, we'll have, we'll have a good idea of how that's going to be held. Let's go ahead and grab this a little bit. So the snake curve too, I'm really utilizing it to get some of that detail in the wave as much as I can. Story is super important, absolutely. That's the thing, guys. If you want to try to create something, um, especially statues or collectibles, there's always a story being told, um, even if it's a character that you know. The base is super important. It really just helps sell the piece and give you something to appreciate. And even just, it's also helpful for those looking at it for the first time. So, this is where kind of creating your own thing can be a little uh, intimidating, but never be afraid, just keep trying. And you can see here, I'm just creating small little ripples. It's kind of following the, the way the water should be flowing as well as the base itself. It feels terrifying for the ship. <laughs> the lift of the wave just, oh. yeah. Thank you, thank you, yeah. 
Yeah, terrifying was what I was kind of hoping for, so. There we go. But also, too, now we get a bigger sense of what is this creature and, like, how big it is. And really, I didn't do anything else to him yet. I just went ahead and just gave it something to have focus on. And then the other thing, too, especially with 3D printing statues, whether it be for personal or for commission, um, the thing to really remember, too, is that it looks good from all angles. So you can see I kind of kept what in the photography world would be known as the rule of thirds, where the creature's on one third of the piece and then the counterbalance is on the other side. And that plays a part in almost every aspect of or every angle of this design. And that's super important to remember. Will you do poly paint? Yeah, I'm actually going to start painting it soon because um, for me personally, painting helps so much in trying to see what it is I'm, I'm uh, looking for. So I, I definitely poly paint. So I'm going to go to here and let's go ahead and save this. We've done a lot of work, so I'm going to resave this. Good relationship and scale to each other. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome in, everybody. All right. So let's actually start kind of... Let's actually start kind of making a little bit of noise in the water. And then let's let's actually get to poly painting it. I think it'll be done. And, and then from there, we can start detailing and really getting into some good stuff. Um, although... Before we poly paint, actually, I did want to show you guys something that's pretty cool. So I wanted to show you this trick. I brought it up last week, but it kind of also, it's a little picky and it's a little um, difficult to pull off. But if you can pull this off, then it's a really great trick when posing characters. And that is using uh, posable symmetry. So I'm going to go ahead and show you real quick what I have on this guy is I have posable symmetry turned on. If we take a look, I'm actually very symmetrical when sculpting him because I posed the face before, um, I posed the face before finally detailing it because I hadn't settled on exactly how I wanted him to look, but I wanted to nail the pose. So in order to get posable symmetry, the thing to remember, and if we go to, let's say a sphere, thing to remember is that you have to be perfectly symmetrical on one one axis. And usually the Z axis, I mean the X axis works the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm gonna change it to posable symmetry. And if we just quickly make something, let's just drag this out. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh look, we have a really weird head. Okay. And let's say that we definitely wanted to kind of pose him in a different direction. So, loop, there we go. We got our head, right? But let's say I want to pose him and then detail him later. Well, if I turn off symmetry and I move him in a different part of the world and even angle him differently, let's put him over here. As long as his topology didn't change, what you can do is when you turn symmetry back on, you'll notice that it's going to want to be symmetrical, but it's really not. But if I didn't change any of the topology, including smoothing, if I go to transform and hit use posable symmetry, it will try its best to kind of figure it out and work from there. And you can, it's very, very like um, finicky, but that's how I got this to be symmetrical. So if you guys will start seeing me sculpt symmetrically on a posed figure, that's how it will be. So definitely play with it, but just know it is a little tricky to get right. So don't be afraid though to keep that option. I find that that option is very handy when it works, but you know, it doesn't always work. So just, you know, play with that, but that's another option if you wanna try to play around with posing and stuff. Uh, I'm sculpting alien centipede, but in trouble to pose the segment in nice curve. Change it tenth time. A bit tired. Try it again later. Yeah, when posing, 
just note that when you pose anything, you're going to break it, and it will definitely be worthwhile to try to, uh, you'll have to fix it. Hey, hello, Next Nox. Welcome in, buddy. Welcome in. Um, has anyone ever told you that you look a lot like <laughs> No, nobody, I can't even say that name. <laughs> but no, nobody has told me that. Well, thank you. You're the first. Thank you. Okay. So what I want to do is actually start giving him some scales and stuff. But let's figure out the color palette. I'm thinking green. A green serpent is always kind of cool, right? So let's get some base colors on him. And when thinking about colors, we definitely want to think about complementary colors. So try to find colors that blend well together. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use Z color. Really awesome tool, by the way. And if we click down here, we can actually get some, we can end up picking some fun colors and get some different shades and variations of the said color. Or what you can do is actually click where you want, go off screen and select the color that you like, and then hit set color. And that will actually change the color in your, uh, in your uh, palette. And then we can go ahead and actually say color and fill object. But I want to make sure my paintbrush is selected. So color, fill object. And I can have that color there. That's a footballer. Up. Oh. <laughs> yep, good to know. Ooh, the soccer player. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I'll take it. Hopefully that's a that's a compliment. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and fill that there. Cool. And now, of course, to what we want. Let's go ahead and grab this go color. So we're just repeating this real fast. Um, we'll do different shades. Let's go to the ocean. And what I'm going to do now is switch color. And I'm going to pick this kind of bluish gradient, right? Well, maybe this blue right here. Hit set, set color right there. Maybe pick that one. Yeah, that's a lot better. We can go ahead and color fill object. Okay, for this guy. Actually, for this guy right here, let's switch. Let's go back. Fill color. So I always give base colors. Things that generally would make the most sense, right? So I'm going to hit auto groups. I'm going to select the sails. There we go. And let's go ahead and pick like a kind of an off white. You don't always want to choose true white because it'll be too bright in the uh, when you try to render out um, or to show off your model. True white just blows out and it doesn't look good. So I like to pick kind of a slight gray when I choose white. And I'll go ahead and fill that that way and then from here I'm actually going to go ahead and pick kind of a like just like a brownish color I have a few options over here with Z, Z color so I'm going to grab this come over maybe pick like this kind of cherry oak color something like that hit set I'm going to go ahead and fill color there we go. So I'm just setting all my base colors. Now with this fin here, I'm actually gonna go back, select the screen, but now I'm gonna kind of give it like a little bit, maybe a little bit more of a bluer feel just for now. Let's see if that works well with each other. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I think those colors are working out pretty good. Nice. And we can use this now as a jumping off point to go ahead and start painting everything up. And I'm going to get something to drink and save it real quick. So let's go ahead and save. Yeah, Z color is amazing. I, I used to never use it. And then one day I watched uh i think shane olsen brought it to my attention and super awesome 
Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and start painting up and detailing. I'm going to detail the dragon first, and then we're going to go ahead and start, uh, and then do the coloring afterwards. But the base colors, I think this is where we're going to be. And one of the things I'm actually going to utilize... Let's actually get some color in his horns first. Let's do something like that. Let's try... kind of want like a reddish brown. Let's see if that works out well. Or maybe we'll go a little bit darker. Maybe like a black. We'll see how that works. For his eyes, I definitely actually want to go more yellow. So I'm going to subdivide a little bit. And let's, let's do like a yellow. Let's see if that plays off well. We're going to paint his eyes pretty cool when we get closer to it. Will you do scales today? I am actually going to be doing scales. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Just kind of looking at the piece as a whole right now. Okay. Let's actually start detailing them up. Out of curiosity, if this model is designed for 3D printing, why color it? Does it help with the creative process? That's a great question, Dan Goodchild. And I say it's, for me, it is definitely helpful to see the color. Um, a lot of times when you're poly painting, it's also helpful if you think you might paint your uh, your 3D model or if you're trying to show off a render. Um, it can definitely help sell the idea to somebody because if you look at a generic color, something like this, somebody may not be able to really see what's going on. It might seem a little bland to them. So by adding some color, you can actually get the sense of story a little bit more. So color will only add to it. For me, color also helps me see depth a little bit better. It's just something I kind of started doing and it really worked out because I would always miss little things. So when you have color, you can definitely see a little bit clearer, in my opinion, on, on how the design is working. Um, also too, if you get really good at painting, you can also kind of help set precedent for, you know, test colors and and stuff like that too. So you have a lot, a lot of uh, freedom and control when you poly paint, but it can also help you out in seeing the uh, seeing the design a little bit better. Okay, I'm also going to use Preview AO for this. I'm going to turn this down to about. This is ZBrush. You are watching uh, Pixel Logic Channel, the creators of ZBrush, and my name is Ian, aka Iris Sculpts. Welcome in. And if anybody would love to, uh, if you're watching this, especially uh, on YouTube after the stream, if you guys would like to try ZBrush for free, ZBrush uh, Mini Core is free. ZBrush Core Mini, there we go, sorry. <laughs> is free and you can get it on Pixelogic's website and you can go ahead and try ZBrush for free. It's awesome. And I've played with it a lot, even as a ZBrush user. It's a really awesome it's a really awesome free version of ZBrush. You guys should definitely try it. Okay. Let's see. Not a problem. You are welcome. Okay. So what I want to do is actually add scales. Now, I I actually went ahead and bought some scales. Um, I found some brushes on the art station. But if you guys would like to create your own scales... Um, I can show you that as well. It's really a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and create that right there. Zebra's Core Mini! Yep. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna isolate an area. So I'm going to mask off where I don't want the brush to be affected. So I don't want the belly of the beast to be affected. Also a really good feature in ZBrush uh, since the 
0.6.2 update is you can actually use the mask lasso to select a really nice clean mask. So a new feature that is really, really awesome. And I do use it a lot. Kind of looks like ZBrush is lagging a bit with it, but it's not. It's just kind of, it's just the kind of the way it looks. It's pretty neat. So you can just grab right there. This will give you a little bit more accuracy in your maskings. And then just like such. There we go. So I kind of masked this section off. I'm actually going to mask this off right here. Hey, Smartest! Oh my gosh, dude, thank you so much for clapping by. Everybody, you guys got to check out the Smartest. Steven is an awesome, awesome sculptor too. He also streams here on Pixo. Big shout out to him. Awesome dude. This composition from the point of view is that the sea monsters after those fine barrels <laughs> or their wine barrels. It definitely could be. All right. So now we got this guy. Let's go ahead and start adding some of our scales now that we're masked off. And I'm just going to go ahead and start dragging and getting these scales. Actually, that's not where I want them. I definitely want to keep in mind the direction of the scales. I want to keep that consistent with however it looks. There we go. As you can see, I'm also kind of blending these in with each other. So I'm purposely putting them down and placing them where I want them. Just like that, I'm going to go ahead and isolate that for a second. And again, because we're doing 3D printing, we're doing high-res sculpting. And so we want all the details. We're not going to be going into another program. We're doing everything in ZBrush. So we want to make sure that all the details stand out here. And any areas that look a little weird, we can go ahead and kind of blend that in and get that scale texture and see how that's working. What's up, Mufafa? I remember hand placing scales for the snake in production. And man, did it take me a long time. Oh, yes. Yep, you can go as... Yeah, for production, absolutely. You want to make it as clean as possible for whatever project you're working on. That's why paying attention to how they overlap is super important. Now dragging them out this way is a little time consuming, but we can get some really good effects this way. And if you get something you don't like, just go ahead and reverse it. Let's come up a little bit more like such. There we go. Now his belly gets a little big right here, so I'm gonna end up blending a few extra this way. Line them up, let's look back at this. Make sure that that's working, which looks pretty good. Is this pirate dragon? <laughs> Put him on one eye patch like he had drunk rum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. All right. I'm going to go ahead, go to his head real quick. 
Now I have symmetry on here. Now I don't have as high resolution as I have on my back. We have about a million point two resolution on his back, but on his head, we actually only have 250,000. So anytime you're also placing down details, what you want to make sure too is that you have enough supporting geometry for that. So if at any point in time it looks like you don't, we can either use Sculptors Pro or we can go ahead and subdivide up a little bit, getting you the geometry that you really are looking for. Of course, when you're using Posable Symmetry, if you do subdivide up, it actually breaks your uh, Posable Symmetry. So you want to reselect Posable Symmetry and then that will actually put you back where you need to be. And in this case, actually, I am getting a little bit of geometry fight and that's not good. So we can go ahead and fix that. Let's push that down a little bit. We're going to be blending these together at some point anyway, so let's take a look at his head and see if I like it. Uh, why not polygroup it and use surface noise? I could do that. That's another way. I sometimes like to hand place my uh, details just because I like a kind of traditional approach to my texturing, but that is definitely another way you can do it. Yep. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. So in this case, I'm actually going to duplicate this head. I'm going to solo it out. I do have Posable Symmetry turned on. I'm going to go ahead and actually... See, I'm getting a lot of Geometry Fight here. So I can either use Polygroup it to remesh it, uh, Zebra Mesh it, and try to get a little bit cleaner Geometry and clean that up, or I can use Sculptress. I think I want to Z-remesh it. It's kind of wonky. So let's actually use the polygroup it method. So let's actually grab our poly paint. We've already filled the color. So let's actually fill it with white. Let's grab this color here. Let's fill this with white and I'll go over that. Let's fill that. Polygroup, uh, the polygroup, it's going to be really good to get good edge loop and still hold jump, uh, and still hold, uh, uh, symmetry pretty well really like the details and scales thank you how to extrude in zbrush how to extrude in zbrush you want to use the z modeler brush so b z m for modeler and whatever your model is let's say you have a cylinder here if you hover over a face hit spacebar which will open up your menu from your z modeler brush and you have extrude and then you can pick either island, all polygroup. You could pretty much, I like to stick with uh, all uh, polygroup all. And then you can either extrude everything or hold alt, tap where you want to extrude and then extrude that out. Yeah. I could just uh, hit I could just hit Z remesh on the head and get some better uh, geo, yes. However, I'm actually gonna show you why polygroup uh, with painting where I want it to be will actually be a little bit better. What I want to do is keep the, I wanna keep some good edge flow around the eyes. And I'll show you what I mean here. I'm going to go ahead and hold. I'm going to get like a black color. Now use this last time. Now I kind of broke the mesh. So that's why I'm going to be doing it this way. Turn lazy mouse on. I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of paint where I want the edge flow to be. It's going to be really helpful to keep some of the shape that I've already designed. Yeah. In 3D printing, you do lose uh, details unless you are using a resin 3D printer, higher res monochromatic LCD panel. The FDM loses a lot of details. Absolutely. Um, you're always going to lose some details, even in resin printing, because you have to factor in that 
you're going to print something with supports generally, then you have to take that off. Once the supports come off, you have to clean it up post-process. Um, if there's a layer shift, which does happen in resin printing from time to time, that'll actually give you, uh, you'll have to go in and clean those up, but you're always gonna lose a little bit of detail uh, anywhere between 5 to 10% detail loss generally, even within resin. So if you can cut deeper, the better. But resin printing is does retain detail a lot better, and you can get much better results than with FDM. So yeah, something to keep, something to keep in mind. Okay. I'm going to go ahead... And the reason why I'm doing this portion here is because I do want to try to retain uh, symmetry by using posable symmetry. So I'm just giving myself some edge loops to work off of. There we go. That should be fine. Let's try that. Now I'm going to duplicate this head. I already did that. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm going to do is actually go to Geometry, Delete, Lower. We don't need lines on right now, so I'm going to turn that off so you can see the color. I'm going to go to Z Plugin, and I'm going to go to Polygroup It, which is right there. And Polygroup from Paints is actually going to take in all that into account and separate it via polycolor, uh, by different polygroups. You can see here, this is actually, let's make that a different color. You do want them to be as different from each other as possible. And now we do get a little bit of kind of jaggy lines a little bit. So we're actually going to go to deformation, polish by groups, which will kind of just clean that up a little bit and do it a couple times. It does also depend on what type of resin, absolutely. And so we... Okay, so we did polish by groups to kind of get a little bit of a clean up here. But as you can see, it's still not perfect. So if you hit the comma key and go up to brushes in your light box, go to smooth, hold shift and smooth groups. Let's we'll just go ahead and turn off the color. We can go ahead and actually smooth our groups down a bit so that they're just a little bit better when we Z remesh. And the reason why we did this is actually set up guides for Z remesh to follow. So that way we get a little bit more control than just hitting Z remesh. I find this method to be a little bit time consuming, but a, but a lot, but really worth it at the end. And like I said, we posed him and we still have symmetry. So we're going to try to retain that. And that's the purpose of doing it this way. I try really hard to keep symmetry on the face until I'm ready to break symmetry. So now we have this. What we're going to go ahead and do, let's save it real fast. Anytime you're going to make a change, a drastic one at that, try to save it. Let's go to Geometry, Z Remesher. We're going to turn on Groups, which is super important at this point. And we're going to go ahead and set this at, like, let's say a 5. And we're going to go ahead and Z Remesh. And we have Symmetry turned on. Again, that's, that's what we're trying to retain. And it's going to think for a second. It's a million poly, so it'll take a minute. All right, go ahead and switch and see what we got. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn off the first head. So we definitely have our head here and the groups look to be pretty good. And if we turn the lines back on and hit solo, you can see we have some decent edge flow. And that edge flow is super important. And we still have our symmetry. 
that's still active. Which is really important. That's what I wanted to try to keep. And by doing so, we can now still sculpt symmetrically on the on the mesh. You should check out and so much monsters quick options for the same process. Yes, render uh, me gone. I actually do have that. I actually have that here. So much. They're great. I love them. It definitely makes that quicker. Yeah. But I like showcasing how it can be done in ZBrush, so that way people understand exactly how that works. How, uh, how did they make that smooth by group brush? How did they make it or where to find it? If you go to your light box under brush and go to smooth, smooth groups. There we go. Now what we could try to do real quick, let's turn everything off and just have the head on there for a second. We could try to project. Uh, this can get a little, this can get a little wonky when you're <laughs> projecting off them symmetrical, but let's go ahead and just hit project. So we're going to subdivide a couple times and then we're just going to go ahead and say project all and see if we can get some of that detail back. But unfortunately we did not and that's okay. At this point, we actually just wanted to get better edge loops. We can bring that in a little bit. There we go. Put that in the middle. And kind of reline that up. It got a little off a bit. Not too bad, though, I have to say. Actually, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> I, I tend to try things that sometimes it breaks. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. grab this guy right here we can actually start fixing our face a little bit which happens a lot so let's go ahead and start posing this the rest of the way at some point too when you're posing you are going to have to sculpt asymmetrically so never be afraid to do that i just try to hold symmet uh, symmetry as long as possible but at some point you're going to have to you're going to have to break it, which will give a, give you more appeal to your character and to your sculpt. So don't be afraid to do that. Which is almost what we're going to be doing here. So Okay, cool. Yeah. Kind of like gums showing a little bit like that. You like the gum? Definitely got a little off center. That was a little risky to do that. And see, if if I'm struggling too much with this, I could just go back and try to find another way to fix it. So there's also nothing wrong with going into Dynamesh. What I like to do is try to find a few things that make sense. Let's actually put that back for a second. I'm always afraid to break symmetry. You know, I was too for a long time. Um, and after a while, you kind of get used to it. But it's super important to, to kind of push yourself a bit. You know. And actually, let's go ahead and... So what I did was I went back to the other brush. I mean, to the other head. I'm going to duplicate that. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm actually just going to go ahead and use good old fashioned Dynamesh for this next part here, just because I broke it a little too much. But I like showing that option. It's definitely worth it. Let's go to Dynamesh and Dynamesh Master. Let's keep it at a million five. And I'll show you why in a second. Do I ever use local symmetry? Yes. 
Yes, I do use local symmetry from time to time. Yeah. Yes. Local symmetry is... Um, I use it when I'm basically uh, doing Z modeling or resizing certain stuff. Something in motion. Yep. There's a time and a place for this. The problem with local sim is if you get used to it or tend to leave it on when you mirror and weld something, it could actually kind of crush your geometry. So be a little careful with that. Okay. Perfect. And at this point, I'm actually going to start breaking some symmetry, and I'm actually going to start scaling his head up a little bit. Get these scales on there. Some ideas. Actually, I want these scales to be a lot smaller. Thank you so much, Skyhawk. How are you doing? Welcome in, welcome in. Go. Okay. I'm actually going to mask off a few areas at this point. Just where I don't want there to be any scales. At least not yet. This is a really good way to just kind of make sure that you have control of your models best you can. There we go. Hey, it looks cool. Oh, let's see. Uh, how do you zoom in and out with a tablet? I always use mouse. Oh, okay. So if you want to zoom in and out with a tablet, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, first way is to either click an empty space or right around this border right here. If you hold alt, if you click alt, click the empty space, let go, you can zoom in and out with a tablet. Or you could set up your pen uh, to have right click, hold alt, right click, let go of alt, and zoom in and out. Or if you hold alt, you'll actually be moving it. So you can either do right click or grab an empty space, let go, zoom in and out. Just realizing the size of the scales, <laughs> the size of the person on the ship, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're making a, a beast. And with with detailing like this, you can get this as, you know, you can spend as much time as you want on here. Again, it just keep the end project in mind. At the end of the day, these scales are going to lose a lot of detail, and I'm going to be kind of cleaning them up a little bit. So I am placing them down in a way that will allow me to come back to them and kind of clean it up by ensuring that I try to overlap them as best as I can. There we go. And now eyes will usually have a softer tissue underneath. That's why I masked off the way I did. Because I do want these scales to be... I well, do want these scales to go up to his brow. Again here, we're doing high-risk sculpting, so we want to get all this into ZBrush pretty simply. I may actually leave these horns alone for a second. I actually might smooth that down. I'll show you why in a second. I think I actually want to bring this up. Okay. 
Gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> All right. Not a problem. Glad I can help. Now with horns, I'm trying to keep in mind that the the bone and the skin are going to kind of protrude around. You know, the bone is actually... Usually horn would be some sort of like... A part of the skull, it's some sort of bone. So I want to make sure that I get that. So I'm actually going to be cleaning this up, using some clay buildup, and then putting the scales back. So kind of fix this a little bit. Let's go ahead and just add some clay buildup. Use S to give me a different brush size. We'll scale this up a little bit like that. Sometimes it helps to come back and look at it from afar. Really helps see if it's working the way you intend it to. I'm going to go ahead and hit solo for a second. I love seeing people that you know been using the software. <laughs> you don't need to do the press and release and alt anymore. You can use control right click mouse. Yep. Anywhere it doesn't need. Yeah, especially when you're up close. That right click is a lifesaver. Still, still catch myself doing the press release method from time to time out of habit. I know, me too, actually. I, I think I bounce around from time to time. You know, if I'm out here, I definitely do the the tap all over the place. But I when I'm up close, I definitely try to use uh, right click. Sometimes my tablet will actually give me a little bit of a problem. And when I hit right click, it'll actually pop up the spacebar menu. <laughs> so, so sometimes I accidentally change my brush size without uh, meaning to. But yeah, it happens. All right. Okay, I'm just kind of smoothing it down a little bit. And again, I'm just taking a... I'm not concerned about the details. I'm more concerned about how the the skull and the horns are playing within each other. Making sure that this all looks like it's working the way I intend it to. See, there you go with the, the tapping. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I'm also going to grab the move brush, so B, M, and V for the move brush. I'm going to kind of bring up his head a little bit. You see I have some scales here. I'm going to try to kind of blend that in with each other. Again, now I'll just use the move brush the rest of the way to kind of position that as best we can. Let's go ahead and grab the scales, which I think it was number two. Yeah, perfect. Uh, what an awesome sculpt you got to turn it in 3D. Uh, you got, what got you into print? Sorry, wow, I can't read. <laughs> what got you into 3D printing your sculpts? Uh, honestly, I worked in uh, aerospace for a long time, and then a good friend of mine actually got me into 3D printing, um, and... I started turning my own designs into 3D printing because I was used to the, the manufacturing process that um, being in aerospace and manufacturing as a whole, like additive manufacturing, uh, does. So it got me into wanting to design it once I understood it. So I was always a bit of a creator. Um, but then to kind of see prototyping kick in more with 3d printing to see that uh you know there's a there's a market for it um it really got me wanting to invest more of my time into it so i found the process to be really cool i had some background in manufacturing and then um, after a while i just 
yeah, I just kind of fell in love with it. And it's there's something very special about holding your art in your hands when it was once digital. It's kind of hard to explain, but I also butchered this eye real quick. That's okay. We can clean that up. Let's actually go back in history. I think I can use the recall. Never used the recall brush before. There it is. Definitely should have used the morph target. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit control tap right there. And I believe if I do this right. There it is. So if you ever make a mistake and you don't have morph target. So I'm going to walk through what I just did. If you ever make a mistake and you don't have a morph target, what you can do is actually recall a point in history. So I had this eye messed up and I didn't have a morph target. And so what you could do is you can travel back in time on your timeline to a spot where it wasn't messed up. Hold control and tap on that spot. And that's actually going to pin that point in history. And it's going to remember that. Then you can go all the way back and forward in time Click your history recall brush by hitting B, H, and then uh, looks like R. Click that. And then what you can do is paint that back. And it works kind of like a morph target. I always knew of that brush existence and it's fun. <laughs> so now you can definitely do that any point in time. If you want to get rid of that history, just control tap in that spot again and that gets rid of it. Um, and then that'll send you all the way back. And then when you fix your mistakes, make sure to save, 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 save. All right, everybody. So we got about an hour left. And for those of you who are new, welcome in. My name is Iris Sculpts, aka Ian. I go by either one. Uh, I make statues for 3D printing and toys. It's a lot of fun. And uh, you're watching Pixel Logic, so be sure to follow, subscribe, and don't forget to check out the other artists who come in here. There's a lot of different artists from a lot of different industries, walks of life. So, and please feel free to ask questions as much as you can. Um, speaking of questions, that's awesome. May I ask how you mostly make your money from designing 3D prints? So um, I freelance right now because of the pandemic. It's been kind of hard to work within a studio. So I freelance for the most part. And so I reach out to different studios and I also take private commissions and people can basically contact me with an idea or a thought process. And then I turn those ideas into reality. And yeah, that's about how I do it. I create base and I usually work with people's budgets too on the, on the private side, so. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay. Let's go ahead and start working a little bit more with this head. So there are parts about it that I don't like, and it's this part right here. So I'm gonna tuck this part in. Because I'm gonna get 3D printed, it's not really gonna matter how much it's seen. What's gonna matter is how we fix it. So I can either try to tuck it in, or I could try to fix it by using the clay buildup. I'm kind of getting in here and working with it a little bit. It has like a little bit of an overbite. And again, now we're sculpting asymmetrically. So we get to add a little bit of personality into him as well. You are welcome, no problem. Okay. Let's go ahead and actually clean this up a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna focus in a little bit on his eye now. Just using the clay buildup and some smooth to get a little bit of that bagginess on his lower eyelid. And on his upper eyelid too.
Nice. All right. And same thing here. Cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're actually kind of designing him on the fly this time. Something I've been trying to practice more often because uh, I normally would follow the client's concept or even with private work um, or private projects, I would kind of find a concept that I really liked. But designing on the fly has been a lot of fun too. Kind of just helps with the the idea. And so by doing so, working with a the theme has been really cool. Okay, cool. Now we can start playing with the eyes a little bit. Get like a little bit of asymmetrical vibes going. There we go. Something like that. Okay, let me take a look at the other scale brushes that I have set up. Yeah, give them a little bit smaller of a scale. Maybe transition that a little bit. I'm going to bring this up. Let's actually mask this area off here. What is your favorite sculptor or toy that you made? My favorite sculptor or toy that I've made uh, to date, actually, it's my my personal sculpt um, where I did Chung Lee versus Vega. It's because of the design. I'll actually show you full screen. I 3D printed this. It's 30 pieces. Uh, let's put this here. Go to full screen for a second. This is by far my favorite design right now. Because Chung Li is <laughs> Chung Li versus Vega. It's separate. And the way that it sits there kind of locks in. And you can kind of get a whole piece of that. Oh, my chat's not working. I thought I had the chat set up right. But yeah, this is my favorite piece. It was really fun. Um, so that's one of my favorite pieces, both FDM and resin printed. Um, and that was just a personal project. I was able to test a lot of things, which is really cool. Uh, favorite movies that inspire, uh, would inspire you the most. Actually, um, I would say by far right now, anime is super inspiring to me. I was always a big fan of anime as a kid. Um, but I also love looking at traditional sculpting and seeing what has been done. And then I try to utilize some of that in my in my everyday work. So that's actually why I sculpt a little bit more like hands-on, as I would say. So you see me like putting everything in by hand. It's well, yeah, it's a little bit more time consuming. I feel like I have a lot more control. And so um and I like to try to have that that kind of feel of it. So it's definitely some of the things that really inspired me the most. There we go. Let me get something like that going on. So now we have the smaller scales and then with some of the bigger ones. When we start painting that, that's going to look pretty cool. I will be sculpting this more on my personal streams during the week so that we can get to the final stage and start prepping for 3D print next week. I really want to get to that part, so uh, just so you guys are aware of something I don't want to skip out on. Hey, Sculpt Kid. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Okay, we're actually going to go ahead and Solo this out for a second. And there we go. Just kind of grab, mask off some of the areas that we don't need. Let's grab that right there. Perfect. Now we can get our scales in there without worrying too much. Let's actually go half on one side, half on the other. I think that'll be really good. And there are lots of different ways to texture too. 
Um, you could definitely use surface noise if you wanted to. Um, I recommend cutting UVs if you do that, which is really easy to do in ZBrush, but sometimes it's nice just to really just get your hands on there and detail it yourself. All depends on what your goal is. As long as you like the thing that you're making. Baby's first puke, yeah. Alright, turned out great. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Alright, let's get a little bit more in the painting aspect. So I want to figure out what kind of... Well, first off, let's get some more. Let's finish the scale here. And then the underside of his of his chin. So you can see here it's a little weird. We need to get some of that tiny scale effect happening as well. So let's get that placed in there. I think that was number one. Yeah, it's number one. And all I'm going to do is go ahead and actually select lasso this portion right there. Oh, my. There we go. There we go. And these are tiny scales. Usually on serpents, you'll see smaller scales in softer tissue areas, and then you'll see uh, bigger scales in harder areas. So. Perfect. I'm kind of smooth that down just a little bit. There we go. And now I kind of want to paint his belly a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and find a suitable color, probably a much lighter kind of yellowish tone. And we'll start painting that section off see if that works absolutely yeah here are my links it's a uh, link tree which has all of my links on there hey yep actually I just started streaming on here this is my third stream so welcome in welcome in there's all my uh, personal info you guys can find me there and I stream also in my own time uh, typically Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, on my own Twitch and YouTube channel. I dual stream there, too. Not a problem. Yep. <laughs> I remember on your own stream, you used to say they really enjoyed the way you narrate your work. Thank you so much. How are you doing, Cecil? How's everything going? All right, let's find a... Let's find a color that we like. Because that's always fun, right? So let's... Let's get a color that we can soften that belly up. So I'm going to pull up my reference real quick. Browse through here. And maybe get kind of like a... F it's going to sound weird, but kind of like a fleshy white tone. <laughs> like a softer version of this I think would work out well. So let's actually grab this color as our main. I like to grab it twice. Hovering over the color and hitting C will grab that color in the viewport. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and just kind of tone that down a bit. And we're just going to use the paintbrush. And I'm just going to hand paint it. Like, there's no need to go too crazy. I don't want to, I don't need to go too technical. Because when we start getting into detail colors and uh, like depths and cavities, We'll be able to do a little bit more, so I'm going to take the intensity and drop it down a little bit, which will also kind of help. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, just work with the RGB uh, smooth intensity for color, and I'm going to have that down really low. I'm going to bring in some of this kind of 
color, then you can kind of just blend the color together and you don't have to worry about uh, smoothing your details. And then obviously too, if you see like you miss a spot with details, go ahead and add that in there. Yeah, just go ahead and paint that off. Let's go solo for a second. Uh, so 3D printing will pick up that detail. What scale do you have in mind? Um, I have, I have about a six to nine inch scale uh, set in mind. Um, and 3D printing in resin will pick up a lot of this detail, but we will lose some of this. So when we prep for 3D printing, part of the print process or the prep process is to actually boost the contrast go in there and cut things a little bit deeper that we think might actually lose detail. So when we print it, we don't have to worry too much about that whatsoever. You always lose a little bit of detail when 3D printing, but you can prevent a lot of that by cutting deeper and just overall prepping yourself um, with the contrast. That'll give you a little bit of a boost there we go. It's actually looking pretty good. So we're just painting at this point just to get a visual representation, but also too, we're going to be able to render this out. And so having nice colors and stuff like there can really just kind of help you see your model and also give you a little bit of a little bit of story. Yes, the scales are a brush, absolutely. These scales, I actually ended up getting these scale brushes on ArtStation. It was really fun. Um, I can actually... Uh, I can actually give you guys a link to that if you would like. But if you guys ever want to see how to make your own uh, scale brushes, or just brushes in general, uh, I would gladly show you that stuff. I was being a little lazy and just wanted to shortcut it. <laughs> Which is okay. In fact, here, I will actually pull that up right now. Let me go here real quick. Bloop, 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 bloop. Let me go to my library. Yeah, this is actually a lot of fun. I'm gonna send you to the right spots. So this is actually where I got the brushes for ZBrush. If you guys wanted to use those. <clears throat> hey, inside the slug, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah, but what kind of anime do you watch? Can you understand Japan? Uh, do I, can, can I understand Japanese? Uh, I'm learning a little bit. Um, I'm, I like all sorts of different anime. Um, from Dragon Ball to uh demon slayer to my hero to uh one punch to one piece x uh, i just started watching hunter x hunter but so yeah i'm kind of all over the place dragon ball is one of my favorite grew up on that a lot pulled a lot of inspiration in my art from from uh anime as a whole there we go okay Okay, let's actually start doing the water a little bit because right now it's just blue and it's ugly and we can make it a little bit better. <laughs> so let's go ahead and save. I'm gonna save a new sub tool. Um, because I save in sub tools instead of projects because they're smaller, I like to save in steps. It's a lot more helpful and it definitely, uh, it definitely allows you to go back in time a little bit too. So I'm gonna take the move brush real fast and bring this up a little bit. Okay. Now I'm just kind of playing with the waves a little bit too.
So if you start to move something and hold alt, you can actually move along a normal, which is really helpful sometimes if you're trying to get a little bit more precise. Let's do that. There we go. Now I'm going to take that snake curve brush again. And I'm going to throw a little bit more waves out here. And it has RGB turned on, so we're going to turn that off. Okay, let's actually add a little bit of uh, a noise to this because it's just too, it's kind of just too blah at this point. So let's solo this out and we can do it one of two ways. We are dynameshed with uh, Sculptures Pro turned on and I usually would recommend probably using some sort of UV if you're going to use some sort of uh, surface noise, but because we're just kind of getting a generic noise on it, you don't really need UVs if you're just trying to get some sort of like just surface noise itself, just something that's going to interrupt the smoothness a bit. So here we can actually come in and actually get just some kind of motion by just bumping this up a little bit. Color, we can turn that down. Actually play with the strength a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. It might be a little bit hard. There we go. There. That gives us a little bit of surface. And then we're going to go ahead and apply that to the mesh. And that's just going to give us a little bit of movement in that water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the clay build up a lot. Turn up lazy mouse. Let's actually Let's get a little bit of uh Let's get a little bit of movement. I'm actually going to create a little bit of a like a a break in surface. So let's use snake snake curve five. This will give us some more surface noise. And let's actually go RGB on. Let's turn that down a lot. And let's actually go with kind of like a white. That's being a little weird. All right, cool. It's not really giving it what I want, so let's turn off the color. There we go. Let's just go ahead and get that on there. So ideally, I'm using the noise to act as water as water breaks. It's going to represent that. Now, we are pretty low in geometry, so I'm not getting exactly everything I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide everything. I'm going to duplicate this so it's just those two showing. We're going to Z remesh this and then we'll project our details back. So let's go to geometry and Z remesh. And I don't really care to keep groups or anything. We just kind of want to give it something nice. Did I miss a question? Sorry if I missed a question. I do not speak Spanish, but I can definitely use Google Translate. Hmm. If I missed a question, I'm sorry. All right, so now I actually have some pretty decent topology you can work with. Let's go ahead and subdivide a few times just so that we have some actual information to work with. And then with our original water selected, 
I'm going to go ahead and hit project, and that'll bring on some of that noise and that color. And we can go ahead and delete the Dynamesh version. It's not really important at this point. And now we have this. Okay. Now let's take that snake curve one more time. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a different method. I'm actually going to just go ahead and take the standard brush. I'm actually just going to do spray and alpha 7. That's going to give me some little bit of noise that I can control myself. Turn everything else back on. There we go. Let's turn that shit back on. So I'm going to add some noise into the area that the water is going to be, quote, breaking. And then I'm actually going to try to inflate that. And that should give me some pretty interesting results. There we go. And the fun part about working with something like water is you just kind of get to experiment with whatever is coming up. Whatever looks pretty good. I'm going to take the inflate brush now. Now I'm going to kind of come in here and try to just kind of inflate that a little bit. And if I'm not liking those results, what I could do is grab an alpha. Yeah, that actually might be kind of cool. Maybe we'll just use the inflate brush and alpha that out. There we go. It's fun to just kind of play around a little bit and see what you end up getting. Now, of course, this still looks like just a big bunch of blue right now. So let's take our paintbrush. But we're actually going to go ahead and grab spray and color spray and alpha seven as well. I'm going to pick white. I'm going to go ahead and keep the RGB a little bit. Give me some kind of yellow. There we go. Oh yeah, that's kind of the material showing through. I'll just play around a little bit, see what we get. I'm going to reference to what the water would look like. This will take some finessing. We won't get it out the gates, so we'll have to play around a little bit. Play with the depth as well. So let's hit the high areas. There we go, that's better. That's looking a little better. So we got about a half hour left. If anybody has uh, questions about ZBrush, please feel free to ask away. I'm also going to use RGB smoothing, so smooth and just using uh, RGB alone will help kind of calm some of this down and blend it. We're just going to work this color, and then we'll come back and start layering it a bit. Go. Oh. 
Again, always zoom out, kind of look at what your model looks like, how it reads, is the thing you're trying to do working or not. What we could do, too, is actually pick uh, something like toy plastic if we wanted to. And actually try to get like a little bit more of a shine to it. Let's get, uh, yeah, let's do... Yeah, we can start playing with some materials at this point. Really, playing with materials at this point would just be more beneficial to, to whatever it is you want to try to do. So we can come up and grab something like the move brush, make sure materials just turned on. Color fill object. And we can actually start playing with some materials if we wanted. Again, just to see if we can get something that we like. Let's actually see about like something a little shiny. Yes, yeah, so that works out pretty well. I like playing with material. Sometimes it's just helpful. It just kind of gives you a little bit of just a little fun. Go. Make sure we pick the thing that we want. There we go. So we can definitely get a little bit more creative with that. The materials don't really do anything for the print, it's just, yeah, maybe if we want to have fun with it. Okay, let's go back to the paintbrush. Let me get a little bit more white in there. Maybe a little sea foam green. Yeah, we're going to come back in with a little bit of different color. I'm going with a white first, which will kind of help give those high points, and then we'll start playing with some colors. There we go. With painting, it's definitely all about layering. So you kind of want to... You're never going to hit it all with one color. You're definitely going to want to play with it a bit. Let's bring this up a little bit. Bringing this out is going to give us a little bit more support. Where that's going to hold the boat. There we go. Let's go back to the paintbrush, so BPA. There we go. Now we're going to select the main base color. And start dialing this back a second. Just so it's not so like in your face. And then we'll start playing with some other colors. And you can definitely do this with layers too. If you want to play with some layering. The other thing, too, is let's say we think this is too blue. We don't really like the color, right? So we can go ahead and save this. Let's see here. What we could do... Blah, 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 blah. Where are we? I did this just the other day. It was really cool. Uh, I want to change... Hold on one second. I did this thing. It was really cool where you can kind of like mess with the color a little bit. Um, <laughs> let's see here. No, not preview. I think it was poly groups. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, sorry. Poly paint. There we go. Uh, poly paint, adjust colors. So this is pretty cool. So if you go to poly paint and go to adjust colors, you can actually adjust the entire thing by changing the art. The RGB intensity, the hue even, saturation, like different different colors. We can bring in more green if we want, less green. This is pretty cool if you're trying, if you're not set on a certain color. So 
go to poly paints and then go to adjust colors. You can even mask off certain colors so you can mask off the white. Say okay. Then you can even like soften that mask, go back to adjust colors. And you can adjust just that section too. So that's all pretty cool. All right, let's actually pick. Yeah, let's pick a little bit more of a green now. Let's actually stop in this. I didn't want to adjust that kind of color. There we go. And let's actually really drop the intensity. Start bringing in some of this tone. See if this works as a whole. Let's actually take a bit of a deeper blue. So I'm going to try to play with both of the colors. Again, a little bit more of an experiment too at this point, which is really fun. And if you don't like the color spray, you can always change that back too. Sometimes the color spray just isn't the, the best approach. And then the other thing we could do too is I kind of want to hit some of the deeper areas. So I'm going to go to masking and I'm going to go to mask by cavity. Adjust this to be about 80%. Mask by cavity is really cool because it'll hit all the low spots, and mask them out. Then you can invert that, really soften it. You can get some pretty cool results here. And if you hit control H, it'll hide your mask. The mask is still there, or you can go to masking, hit view mask, and you can hide it. You can even just go to color and fill color with it masked if you wanted. We're going to make this blue a little bit deeper, a little richer. Start playing with that a little bit more. She dropped the... Layers like an onion. Yep, exactly. And there's no need to try to paint it all right. I've spent hours painting before in poly paint. It just all depends on what effect you're trying to go for. And if you're trying to use poly paint for your render, which you definitely can, um, you'll definitely get like a. You can get some really fun results. Okay, let's lower the RGB intensity. There we go. And again, if something's not working, you can paint over that and try again. Or an ogre. <laughs> nice. Love the reference. Then again, any C anywhere where there's color will actually give you uh, an ability to kind of color drop a bit. And again, just that kind of back and forth really is helpful. So let me know, guys. We got about 20 minutes left. Let me know if there's anything you guys really want to see, or if you have any other questions that I might be able to answer that are ZBrush related. Or 
Or if you just want to say what you're working on. I love hearing what other people are working on. So now I'm kind of dialing back those areas I painted white. Getting them some more of that kind of sea color. But you can see the more I do this. And then go back over with the other color. It kind of helps almost look a little of a natural highlight. You just got to keep working it. Again, as far as the integrity of the print, it doesn't really matter too much, but the color's fun. And it helps me kind of see everything as is. Now what we could do too real quick is give our, our dragon a little bit of uh, fake AO. And so by doing so, we can go back to mask by cavity. I mask that out a little bit. Invert that. Let's actually select a dark color, but similar to the snake color that's there. We'll hide that mask, and then we'll just go ahead and start filling in that color naturally. So RGB intensity, we'll bring it up, say about 40%. Let's actually pop that color off to the side here and just start hitting fill object a couple times. Bring a little bit of depth to the character. I like to bounce around a lot too when I'm painting. And then sometimes if you want to get this, this area right here, paint it a little bit more. I like to use the damn standard. Turn on RGB only. And actually get like a lower intensity. Let's try nine. Nice big brush. You can get in there. You can even cut it a little deeper if you want. It's always helpful too. So we can cut and paint at the same time. There we go. Perfect. How long have I been sculpting? I've been sculpting in ZBrush for about four years. Um, I started, basically, a buddy of mine turned it on. I was starting right around, uh, I believe it was uh, Sculptress. It was the first program I started digitally sculpting in. And uh, then I got turned on the ZBrush pretty quick, since it was one of the most powerful programs at the time for sculpting. And in my opinion, one of the best. And, uh, yeah, so I've been doing it for about four years. And I just love it. All right. I'm going to actually have to start texturing the, the fins a little bit. Might do that on one of my personal streams. So if you guys want to join me and continue the progress of the sea creature, please don't forget to follow my socials where you can keep up with all my latest and greatest projects. Kind of just looking at it now. I got a few more minutes. Okay. So I really want this seam right here to get a little bit tighter on his belly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the inflate brush. And I'm going to turn off the alpha. Select this guy right here. And what we're going to do is actually store morph target at this point. And the reason for that is because now I don't want to ruin any of the details I have here. 
but I'm gonna start lightly bringing in some of this this belly almost like a seam I'm gonna cut and then I'm going to turn around hit the inflate brush kind of a little pinch that a bit so it's a fun little transition working on the sculpt for my students black hand from world of warcraft nice nice Making this for 3D print or just for fun? Uh, it'll be for 3D print. And for fun. It's for both. There we go. There we go. So let's go ahead and take the damn standards of BDS. And let's go ahead and kind of carve that out a little bit. And then the inflate brush kind of pinch it back a little bit. There we go. And I'm doing this trick. I do this trick a lot with seams, but anytime I want something to have some depth, but make it seem like it's a natural uh, transition, that's a method I like to do. It also kind of covers up sometimes when you cut into something. You can get a little bit of a warble like that. So if you cut a little bit deeper, say something like that, and then come in with the inflate brush, you can kind of almost pinch that, seal that up, and it gives you a really cool effect. There we go. Awesome. Bloop. Just like that. If you make sound effects, bloop, 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 it should help you. <laughs> All right. So see, now we kind of get that like pinch. Almost like that's wrapping around the belly a little bit. I'm going to go in too and make sure we kind of fix. You see how some of the, the scales are kind of like they just stop short. We'll go in and fix that. I'll mask that off manually and then get that fixed. With 3D printing, the, the fun part about it is you only have to sculpt what's going to be visible. And you don't want to spend too much time sculpting things. So like you can see, I have a short, a short stop here, but it's right there. That's going to be the entry point. So that's where I'm going to be making my keys for when I go to cut this bad boy up. So. I don't need to spend all that time kind of focused on an area that's not going to be ever seen. It also makes the cutting process a little smoother when you don't have to worry about details. There we go. There we go. I get a little bit of something like that. And just taking a peek around too, just kind of seeing how the piece is looking. If it's something that's, maybe we can add a, some rum barrels or something in the water. Yeah, just kind of have fun with it. Uh, yes, I have used a lot of other 3D softwares. Um, this is just the Pixo stream. So we usually just stick it to Pixelogic because they're the makers of ZBrush. So we usually keep it uh, related to ZBrush questions during these streams. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and save. Yeah, I've used a lot of different software. I definitely suggest exploring too. It's fun. So you can really just play with your design a lot. All right, guys. So we got about nine minutes left. Does anybody have any other ZBrush related questions, comments? Uh, what are you sculpting? <laughs> and uh, real quick too. Um, if you guys really want to, uh, especially if you guys are watching this after the fact, please feel free that if you ask a question that you are not aware of, 
Uh, or if I don't have the answer for it, for example, then don't be afraid to reach out to Pixelogic themselves. Um, you can always go to Ask ZBrush or you can send support questions to them and they can always answer questions on the, uh, if you have them. So if we don't have them here when we're streaming, definitely feel free to reach out to, to Pixelogic.com. That's gonna be pretty much it for the day. I got a couple more minutes. I'm gonna definitely need to play with detailing on his uh, his little fin because we still have our our placeholder here. And like I said, I'm gonna be working on him during the week on my own stream as well, just because I really want to put some more time and effort into him, and then. Uh, so you guys can catch it on my socials there. But then I want to get to the prepping for 3D print as well. Because that's a lot of fun doing that. And everything will be done within ZBrush. I'm kind of just finagling this up a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Let's actually really quickly see if we can play with a little bit of texturing on. See how this works. Simple drag brush. Ooh, that actually works pretty cool. Let's put back face mask on. Actually, just trying to see if this. This type of texture will play well. A lot of times I'll just try something just to see how it works. And if it doesn't seem to work really well, then, you know, no big deal. Sometimes it's just really, it's better just to keep it simple. Don't have to go too, too crazy with it. see how I feel with this in a minute what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna be putting I'm actually gonna be blending this I'm not gonna keep it this harsh so something like this and then I'm actually gonna go ahead hit B S and we're gonna do smooth peaks and the reason for smooth peaks is that it's actually gonna find the highs and the low points and it's going to start kind of blending the two together, almost meeting them in the middle. Turn off RGB for this, and we'll turn the intensity down. Let's turn back face on for a second. And so it's going to take a lot of that harsh, harshness of that uh, texture I just added. It's going to go ahead and just soften it. And we can see if we even like that. Which, that's not too. That's not too bad. Uh, how do you get an invite to stream for Pixel Logic? Uh, I'd say reach out to Pixel Logic. Go ahead and send them an email and send them your stuff and talk to them and see what they have to say. That's actually how uh, I actually reached out to them 